Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so if you haven't already done so, then watch the previous three examples. That's examples 0, 1, and 2. And a quick recap of what we've done um, so far, that is uh, what we did in those three examples, is that in example 0, uh, we looked at the big picture and saw how delta epsilon limits make sense for functions of two variables. And we also explained why they work, right? And so that was really cool. That's example 0, and that's the most important example. Then in example one, we encountered three different limits, all of which did not exist. So there, we learned techniques uh, for figuring out whether or not a limit um, exists, uh, a limit for a function of two variables, that is, right? Okay, and then in example two, uh, the previous video, we encountered our first delta epsilon limit proof for functions of two variables, because there, in example two, the limit did exist, and so then we had to write a delta epsilon limit proof, right? And so uh, then this expected video um, has us write our second delta epsilon limit proof because, well, this is what we're considering, and this, uh, well, the function is this, and this is the limit that we're considering, right? Uh, that is, the limit is x comma y goes to zero, zero of f of x comma y, and it turns out that this limit is equal to zero, and of course, you know, we would first try the few different ways uh, that we learned uh, in example one uh, for figuring out what the limit is. And, you know, once we consistently keep getting the same limit value, in this case zero, then we go to the formal definition, the delta epsilon limit definition for functions of two variables. And that we saw in example zero and, of course, covered in the previous examples. And what it said is that, that uh, we need for zero is less than uh, the square root of x minus a squared uh, plus y minus b squared is less than delta. A and b are both zero and then zero here. And that's why we just have x squared plus y squared inside the square root. Uh, we need to follow this, uh, that the absolute value of f of x minus l, l being the limit value here, zero, is less than epsilon, right? This is the um, definition the delta epsilon limit definition for functions of two variables, right? Okay, cool, cool. Of course, we've already seen all this in the previous example, and so it's not new, and therefore we can go through it a bit quicker in this video. It is only at the tail end that uh, this example is very different from the previous example. Okay, so this here we write from the delta epsilon limit definition for functions of two variables adopted to this function and uh, this particular uh, limit point, right? Okay, okay. Uh, but then now focusing on this, right, it is manipulating this that is going to allow us to come up with our relationship between delta and epsilon and remember that is what we're after coming up with the relationship between delta and epsilon okay now uh, as i said because this is very similar to the previous example except for uh, the tail end you should know why i could first write that this is less or equal to 5x squared if you've watched the previous example that is and it is because x squared divided by x squared plus y squared an absolute value or without absolute values less or equal to one that is uh, this here is true because this is true right and this is true because uh, the denominator is uh, either equal to the numerator or bigger than the numerator always this denominator x squared plus y squared is either equal to or bigger than y squared right okay and that is why this is true and if this is true uh, it's clear why this has got to be true uh, now we know uh, that this is true right and we explained why this has got to be true in the previous examples and we did that thoroughly so i'm not going to do that here and so up to this point this is looking very much like example two so what's different well uh this part right is our uh restriction on delta and we already said in the previous examples that we want to make use of our restriction on delta so uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty clear why we wanted to move from this using this in this direction right we wanted to involve this guy because now we can say uh, that this is in turn less than Delta and therefore we can say the square root of X squared is less than Delta right uh, but yeah after in, in moving in this direction in the previous example uh, we didn't go to where we're gonna go this time which is to 
uh, this, right? Square root of x squared is uh, less than delta. This is what we want now. Why? Because, well, if you look here, we've got 5x squared. And so we've got to do something about this x squared. We've got to get away from x and have it involve delta and some, some constants. And that way, um, we can uh, compare this, right? Like, if we can put a less than here, we can compare this to this and say, oh yeah, epsilon has got to be whatever this is. And uh, this, of course, once we've made it an expression that involves delta, right? Okay, okay, okay. Um, I'm kind of like trying to show you the algebra objective when you're writing these delta epsilon limit proofs. Okay, so clear that if you want x squared, once you've got this, then you should move in this direction, squaring both, both sides, we can write this, right? So then, now we know that x squared is less than delta squared, and it is because of this that this less or equal to is going to uh, be a strict inequality on this side because x squared is less than delta squared. So we can write that 5x squared is less than 5 delta squared. And so then we have this an absolute value is less than 5 delta squared and it is also this here less than epsilon uh, by requirement and so then that is going to allow us to come up with our relationship between epsilon and delta All right because um, seeing that like if this is true we need this to follow but if this is true we know that this is true we can now say ah if this is true then epsilon should be uh, 5 delta squared that way this will be true and therefore this will be true yeah okay cool cool uh, and so then I'm saying we should claim that epsilon is 5 delta squared and notice that that means uh, that since we want delta by itself uh, and these final parts always uh, that delta will be the square root of epsilon over 5 and so this is kind of like hmm, an interesting expression for delta. And in fact, the expressions for delta get even more interesting, uh, where, whereby, or wherein, the most interesting one uh, is an example 5. And therefore, keep watching and you'll see a very interesting looking delta in example 5. Yeah, okay, cool. Otherwise, um, you know, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you watch this together with example 2, and in fact, if you watch it together with examples 0, 1, 2, then you'll get a lot more out of it. And yeah, all right, keep watching. Take care.